Buckle in, boys and girls, it's story time. I have a whopper of a story regarding this game right here. So we're gonna time warp back to the 80s and 90s where gaming felt a lot different than it does today. This was pre-internet, pre-social media, so when there were events going down, like a new console dropping or a big game coming out, um, typically the way I would find out about stuff would be, I would just be walking into a store and I would see something going on. I would literally be walking into a Walmart or something, and I would stumble into some kind of gaming tournament I had no idea about, um, or a promotional event, and on one fateful day in 1997, that is exactly what happened. Around that time, the Nintendo 64 had recently dropped, and it was revolutionary. Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Pilot Wings, these games were next level and unlike anything the world had ever seen. I'll never forget some of the marketing for the N64 back in the day. I remember getting these VHS tapes in the mail that showcased the games and they had some of the most hilarious and ridiculous skits I'd ever seen. What are you guys doing with Mario? <laughs> <laughs> no! Leave Mario out of this. <laughs> And who could ever forget the Smash 64 commercial? Legendary. But I'm not here to talk about the Nintendo 64. I am here to talk about how I shattered some kids' dreams. So me and my family had walked into a Walmart, late 1997 I believe, and there was a Diddy Kong Racing tournament being hosted in the electronics section. How cool is that? Do they do stuff like that anymore? Just walking into a Walmart, Diddy Kong Racing, Nintendo 64 tournament? Like, what is that? That's so awesome. Now, at that point, I can't remember how long Diddy Kong Racing had been out. I think at least a couple weeks because I already had the game and I'd been playing it. The Walmart had just been built and opened, so it was like a joint Nintendo 64 slash Walmart celebration promotional event. So just to paint you all a picture, I was with my parents. I want to say, yeah, my brother was there too. My parents and my brother, we were all there. And we walked up to the hosts of the tournament. We asked them how the rules worked. And they told us it was a time trials competition. It was on the map Fossil Canyon and players were given three chances to basically race themselves and get the best personal time possible. And at the end of the tournament, the three players with the best personal times would win prizes. So that seemed cool. I was interested because I was already in love with the Diddy Kong Racing anyways. I was playing it at home probably every day. But it wasn't until I saw the prizes that I got really, really invested. So all three places, I believe, won this cool like Nintendo 64 pen. It came in a cool case. You know, I might actually have one here. Oh, what do you know? Wow. It says Nintendo 64 on the side, comes in a little case, it's pretty neat. I can't remember exactly what second and third place got on top of the pen, maybe third place only got a pen, second got a pen and something else, uh, first got a pen, and the grand prize. It was this incredibly cool, incredibly rare Nintendo 64 jacket. It had a patch on the left chest, nothing on the back, so clean, so slick. I remember thinking that is such a cool jacket. You know, you see a lot of like gaming jackets and coats and stuff, and usually they're like kind of over the top, a bit crazy. Maybe you wouldn't really wear those out in public, but this jacket, this was a pretty cool jacket. So I was in awe of this jacket and I knew I wanted it immediately. So I checked out the scene. There were people standing around all over the place with their parents and stuff. Uh, maybe just waiting around to see. Uh, they were just watching. Maybe they had already competed and they were waiting to see like how they would place. When I got there, some kid was actively playing, uh, doing his turns. And I remember stepping up behind him and just watching and kind of assessing his abilities, seeing how good he was. They had a little desk where they were documenting all the best times for everybody. And I walked up to the desk and I looked at it. Um, I don't remember who the first place person was, like what his name actually was. Uh, for our purposes, let's just call him Jack. So Jack was standing nearby with his dad. They were watching new challengers try to beat his time. Now Jack had a very nice lead over second place. 
It seemed like no one could come close to his time. So the person we were watching finished up and Jack seemed happy because his time was nowhere near as good as his was. Eventually it was my turn. So I stepped up to the controller. Um, I remember picking either Tip Top or Timber. I want to say it was Tip Top. I can't remember for sure, but those were two, two of my favorite characters. Um, and you could also choose your vehicle, uh, the cart or the hovercraft. For some reason, I feel like the plane wasn't an option. Um, the plane does exist in Diddy Kong Racing, but I think it wasn't an option in this specific scenario. So Fossil Canyon was not a water level, so between the hovercraft and the cart, it was a pretty much a no-brainer, so I went with the cart. And then the race started. Ready? Go. I gripped the controller firmly, I got the starting boost. I could feel Jack and his dad peering down the back of my neck, man. Like I just remember that I could see them out of my peripheral vision. Now I don't actually remember, but in my memory, I don't I don't recall being nervous. But who knows, maybe I was sweating balls. That's just how I remember it. So I hit boost to number one and number two. Those ones were easy. This one, this one required finesse to pull off. And 10 year old me finessed the hell out of it. I cut the corner perfectly to fly over the pond at the optimal angle, skipping as much of the map as possible without getting slown down too much by the sand. It was a thing of beauty. At that point, I could already sense Jack and his dad's jaws dropping. Even if Jack had done the pond boost, he very likely hadn't done it that effectively. And another thing you have to understand is this was when the game originally came out. We were kids, we'd never seen anyone else play this game before. Uh, by nowadays standards, this pond jump is nothing at all. But back then, this was incredible. And after that, the rest of the race went smoothly. I hit the pond boost every lap. Everything went pretty well. As I crossed the finish line on lap three, I didn't even have to check Jack's time again because I knew. I knew that I had crushed it. Jack and his dad were in disbelief. Who was this bowl cut sporting kid that came up out of nowhere and demolished his time? Well, that was me. I loved gaming as a kid, and finding this tournament randomly just felt like destiny. I mean, what were the odds that I stumble upon this tournament? You know, I was already playing Diddy Kong Racing like every day. It just was amazing. It was kind of awkward after that because I still had two more attempts to get a better time. Um, and Jack didn't have any more attempts and I had already beaten him, so he couldn't even redeem himself. So like the troll I am, I tried to play with the hovercraft on my second attempt for some reason, which didn't go that well. And then I tried again with the cart and I think I had a decent run on my third attempt, but it wasn't as good as my first. And that was it. After that, I took my place on the sidelines with everybody else waiting for the tournament timer to end. And here's the worst part for Jack and his dad. When I showed up, there was only like 20 minutes left of the tournament. So Jack and his dad had likely been there for hours and Jack had been in first place the entire time, undisputed, and then at the last second, I showed up and took his time. This punk-ass kid coming up out of nowhere and snatching the prize, and that's the story of how I won this incredibly cool Nintendo 64 jacket that I still have and cherish to this day. 25 years later, this was always a really cool story that I wanted to share, especially after I became a gaming creator, like a live streamer, playing games for a living. I looked back at the story and I was like, wow, this is almost like a coming of age tale in a way. Um, it's a really cool piece of history that I'm, I'm happy that I get to share with you all and kind of talk about. It's, it's really funny. Um, it's just a really funny story and I look back on it so fondly. Hopefully Jack wasn't too upset about it. I wonder, I wonder what Jack is up to these days. It would be so cool if somehow he saw this video. Also, his name's not Jack. I don't know what his name actually is. Thinking about Walmart back in the late 90s, man, it was so different. You know when you would walk through Walmart and see the lines of N64 boxes, SNES boxes, the cartridges, the box art it was so beautiful, so creative. Like, call me old-fashioned, but I feel like it just ain't the same these days. The boxes were so bright and colorful, you know? Like, so cool. So freaking cool, man.
Anyways, that is the story of how I crushed some little kid's dreams.